Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is Terry, and this is the Yarn Joy podcast, episode number 27. Um, welcome to all my subscribers and all my new subscribers and the ones that have been with me since the beginning. I'm so glad you came by to check out what progress I've gotten done on my projects. So today I have some finished objects and works in progress and a little story to tell you. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Okay, so if you've been watching my uh, previous episodes, which I'm, I hope you have been, uh, you've seen that I've been working on a shawl, um, the Aragenia shawl. I'm still not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but anyway, it made with the Lion Brand Mandala yarn in the colorway Spirit, and I have it finished. And I'm so glad, if you remember the color, it started with this charcoal gray, and then it kind of went on and went into a navy, and then it had this this uh, really pr pretty turquoise aqua blue color, and then it started over. And so I was really hoping, when I was getting down to the end of the shawl, that I was really hoping that that blue color would pop up again, the... the uh, bright turquoise color and it did so I'm so glad for that here is the finished shawl I'll try to back up here as much as I can so you can see the whole thing there you go and it is um, really wide wider than my wingspan I guess you'd say and I haven't even blocked it yet but let me show you a close-up of the edging. I really like this pattern. It was very easy and uh, fairly quick really and um, I think it just really set off the color of the yarn. The pattern did. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, I'm going to wash it and block it and I'm sure it'll even soften up even more. So there's my first finished object. My second finished object I was telling, showing you last week was the cupcake doll that I made on the uh, Nifty Knitter Litting, uh, Knitting Loom, <laughs> the blue one, I think it's right there <laughs> on my wall back there. Anyway, all I, had, I had her done last week except I hadn't fixed her hair yet, and so I did get her hair fixed. I, I, I had to add a few more strands in there because she just seemed like she was kind of thin on top, so uh, I did that. And I got a rubber band and I pulled her hair up into a bun and then a half, not a half bun, a bun, but then you pull it and don't pull it all the way through so that way you have this, the ends are in the back there. And then I went through my um, craft stash supply, I guess you'd say, and I found these little purple violet flowers. Let's see if it'll focus. And they're on uh, like wire stems and so I just poked them in there. Um, they're not, um, they're not secure. I mean, I mean, I could glue them in, I guess, but since really she'll be for looks and not really for playing with too much, I would imagine. So, uh, unless I decide to take her down and play with her, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think she turned out really cute. I was really wondering about the eyes because I was thinking her eyes seem like they're too small, but I kept felt, feeling like if I kept working on the eyes to try to make them bigger I might mess them up <laughs> so I don't know I don't I don't know if I'll fine-tune her eyes or not I did put another loop around where he, her ears were because it just seemed like her ears weren't that prominent I uh, if you can see them but I think they look a lot better now so anyway there she is okay and this is from um, there's a website called LumaHat.com, and it is for knitting, uh, loom knitting. But she also had a tutorial on YouTube to follow, and so that's what I did to follow that. So that's my second finished object. My third finished object is the messy hat, messy bun hat that I was working on. Uh, I did this out of. Um, oh, let me find the label here. I had it somewhere. I don't see it. Oh. Anyway, it's a, 
uh, big twist you uh, not value yarn big twist maybe it's sincerely it's from Joann's and it's in a, the de, uh, navy denim colorway I think it's called anyway the pattern is from a website called um, a crocheted simplicity .com, I believe and I will put a link in the description box below but her patterns I was very impressed uh, with all of her patterns if you actually go to her website which I highly recommend that you do because she has quite a few free patterns on her website and some of them come with YouTube tutorials on how to do them this one did but I just followed the written patterns I really didn't look at the YouTube video that much but uh, with this hat, uh, you do the ribbing first until you get um, to the width that she tells you to for the particular size. Uh, she has all the way from like the American Girl doll, I guess you'd say, which is the 18 inch doll, so a doll hat, all the way up to a large adult hat. And then they, ha they have, um, you know, babies, uh, not babies, but ch children, I guess babies, children. Uh, young adult teen young adult or small adult and large adult and this is the teen small adult size and uh, So anyway, you do the ribbing first and then you uh, you don't fasten off though Then you start doing you work you start working it around on one end of the ribbing because then you start going around and uh, the stitch is called a linen stitch and what it is is a single crochet chain one single crochet which will make like loops and then the next time you go around you put your sh single crochet in the chain one loops below or in the previous round and do it that way and you just repeat it up until and, and she has very good instructions she'll tell you you know how many inches up you need to go and then she'll tell you how to do the decreasing and um, but she's got other patterns on her website that are for free other hats and cowls uh, she's got, um, I think she's got maybe socks, leggings, um, you know, footwear type slippers, that sort of thing. And then she's got, oh, she's she's got really lots of patterns. Um, in fact, I believe I saw a blanket pattern that I really want to keep my eye on. I think I want to try it with some of my other. Uh, I have another Lion brand uh, mandala with the gradient colors and I think this one particular pattern would look really cute with it. Um, but I also have uh, some Premier uh, Baby Cake, I think. Cake Pop. Bernat Pop, no. <laughs> Something like that. I can't remember now. <laughs> but anyway, um, I've got some that are in more baby colors and, and so I might use that pattern for one uh, baby blanket possibly but anyway go to her site and look at her the free patterns that she has and then she has some paid for patterns as well but she has a very good, good site uh, website okay so that is my um one two third <laughs> Or a finished object and my fourth finished object is I'm working of course I am continuing on with the 365 days of granny square project and um, I am on let's see I did four I got four squares done this week I did number 57 right here and here's number 58 and this one was I really liked 59 I believe she did um, I'm, I'm thinking she did all solid colors like see I did the yellow and then the orange I think she did both in the same color but uh, I changed my colors up just a little bit so that's 59 and number 60 okay so that is my finished objects and that will transition me into my works in progress because I am in the same project of the 365 days of granny squares I'm, pu I'm now putting the granny squares together to make in making my second blanket of this series so um, last week I believe I showed you that I had five strips put together to number five and then I had four squares done so I've now no five five squares done yes five squares done and I did put them on the blanket so there's these two which finished out my first row of seven squares across and then I started my second row and I had the three 
uh, squares across the bottom there so far. And then the four, these four that I just finished, that will finish my second row here. And this one, I'm doing my favorite join as you go flat braid uh, method in joining the squares. And this time I'm using, because my last project I used black for the border. And so this time to join the squares together. And so this time I'm using red heart. Uh, I believe it's, it's either called off white or soft white. Now I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm doing that. And um, I think this one, oh, and I went up to, like two hook sizes to like a J hook on this project. And so my squares are turning out larger. They're turning out like closer to six inch squares. So I think with doing the still the seven um, squares across that I'm going to have, uh, it, see it's quite large. And so I won't have to worry about putting another border on the outside like I did with the last blanket. So what else? <laughs> Okay, so works in progress uh, number two is a little pouch. It's a pouch, zippered pouch pattern that I found on Ravelry, but the website that the pattern is located is the moogliblog.com, I believe. And it is a zippered pouch that looks like a cassette tape for all us older people, older folks <laughs> that remember cassette tapes. So here is the what I've done so far. Uh, red heart yarn, this is black, white, and of course this color, it's not quite showing out, I don't think on the camera, the exact color, but it's the turquoise, turquoise color. <laughs> so I will show you a picture of what it's gonna look like so then you can kinda get the idea. It is a pouch with a, back, a black background, and I believe the back side of this is this striped pattern right here the white and the turquoise and uh, as you see this part is stitched onto a black panel to make the front and when you stitch this part on that black panel you leave the top of the cassette like this is the label of the cassette you leave the top one open so that way this will be an outer pouch or pocket pocket yeah and then inside you will have I don't have another picture of it but um, it's got a zipper and then it's a sleeve I guess you'd say and she, now she did not line the bag but I may because I have some black fabric I might use I'm not sure but I may line the bag put a liner in the bag as well um, with the zipper so anyway, I thought it was so cute, and anything retro I, I kind of like, you know, so uh, I think it's going to turn out really cute. Oh, I think I'm holding it upside down. Oh, sorry. It's like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, that is my second works in progress. My third works in progress is, um, like I was telling you last week, that I did add a couple of knitting projects to my works in progress group. I guess you'd say, uh, for the purposes of, of some Christmas gifts. And so I am working on a knit, um, hat, a beanie, and this is called the Declan's hat. And it's got a lot of cabling in it, which I have never done before. So it's, it's kind of a challenge for me, but I am enjoying doing it. And it is in a, I think it's turning out, yeah, it's turning out green. It's a hunter green color, and this is called the the yarn is lion brand heart heartland i believe um i don't know it's it's like a hunter green but i don't have the label anymore so i don't remember exactly what the name of the color is but anyway see how these cabling you start with this ribbing and the cabling is going up and right now they crossed over right there which i thought that was super cool the way they did that and i do have a picture of the finished project, finished object, I guess you'd say. Maybe you can see it a little better there. It's on Ravelry. I don't know if I can bring it up further, yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's really a cool hat, and I'm hoping that it's going to turn out well, really well, that I continue not to have many problems with it, and um, I just hope the sizing. I have never been one to 
for some reason I have trouble with sizing like hats turning out exactly the right I go by the measurements of you know I'll follow a hat go by the measurements it says and then for some reason it, it it'll turn out too small or I must have really tight gauge I'm not sure but the reason I picked this pattern is because in the notes for this pattern it said that it's a very forgiving pattern as far as the sizing because it's very stretchy and so I'm hoping that will be something that will work in my favor <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> anyway so that is my Declan's hat and then um, last week I also showed you I'll just throw this in here in here right quick um, I also told you that I was making some yoga socks um, I thought that would be a good start for making socks knitted socks because I've never done heels and toes before um, well I start I, I was doing pretty good working on it and I got past where the heel hole was on the, on the sock and I was working on the part that goes around the arch of your foot and I, I tried I thought I'm gonna slip it on and see how the sizing is because the person I was wanting to make it for she has smaller feet than I do and so um, I thought well I'm gonna try to size it on and see I'm hoping that you know I'm thinking I was just hoping it would fit her well it I, I tried it on and it was kind of on the baggier side on for my foot and so I knew that there was no way that it was going to fit her foot correctly so it's kind of in timeout right now I got discouraged with it because I'm thinking oh it's not going to turn out to be the right size after doing all this work so I don't know what's going to happen with those we'll see we will see <laughs> but anyway so that's what which was no progress <laughs> on those but then my next work in progress that I did actually work on uh, I told you last week that I well I showed you last week that I got the cotton flowers yarn that I've been waiting over a month for that I had ordered myself for my birthday that was last week well and I showed you that I had gotten the yarn right there and I couldn't wait to start it I just couldn't wait to start to see what it was gonna be like so I started it <laughs> and this is a shawl and it is a now this yarn the story about the yarn it's cotton flowers yarn I got it off of Etsy and it is a company though from Germany and ships from Germany and so the pattern I found to do, use this yarn with is a German pattern and so but it has charts and uh, between the because it's written in German but I was able to pick out kind of what the pattern said by I found a chart a translator type chart for crochet terms uh, from German to English and Spanish to English and uh, maybe even French I believe but anyway so that got me started and then there's charts and so I'm getting a lot better reading charts now because because the Erigenia shawl that I did it was um, it was charts that I read to, to do it and um, I, I did okay with it I had a little bit of trouble on one side I ended up with too many clusters or something and I had to rip it back and and redo it again but anyway I got it straightened out so anyway so this pattern now trans it's in Germany German even the the name of the pattern so translated I believe it means the the, the this and that shawl I'll put a link in the description box where you find the pattern It's from Ravelry free pattern I believe it was a crochet along because it's the way it when you download it it looks like it was in four parts and so I think it was like a crochet along where she maybe released a part at a time maybe but anyway I got started on it and here's the first part I don't know if you can see the stitches but I have a picture of a project that somebody did that pattern for if I can find it here there okay no this way looks better <laughs> okay here's the shawl if you can see um, there's lots of projects of it if you go to Ravelry and look at the 
the different projects that people have done uh, you can see the pattern much better but it's got these different sections to it and uh, there's one section let me zoom it up I don't know if you can see it but there's one section that's got some butterfly stitches like two rows of butterflies and then below it there's a section that's got hearts do you see that maybe I don't know <laughs> but anyway I think it's just really pretty and um, there was somebody in the group or in the one that the someone had made this pattern before uh, she used actually used a skein of the or cake of the cotton flowers yarn to make it and so she um, I'm kind of going to I'm going to kind of go by what she did because she wanted to be able to use up all of the cake and so she did a repeat of that section there that's got hearts and um so I'm going to follow what she did because at the end she had just a little bit left over and so I'm hoping that that will be what happens with me uh, when I did the Aragenia shawl I used the Lion Brand Mandala and I, I used one and then I ran out and I had to start another one, the second cake. And this is how much I had left over right there. Now, I re-caked it up myself on my barn, my barn, <laughs> yarn baller, <laughs> yarn winder, whatever. And so, um, yeah, yarn winder, yeah. Anyway, ball winder, there you go. <laughs> Um, but I have a pattern, well not a pattern, but I, I saw, when I looked up this yarn, if you go on Ravelry and you look up the yarn in the particular colorway, you can see the projects that people have made with that color. And somebody did a square, it was like what ended up, I think she turned it into a pillow, pillow, uh, pillow like a throw cushion or whatever, you know, to be on the couch or whatever. And she used it and it, it was a flower and it started in the middle and then you just keep, you, you enlarge it as much as you want to with petals, rows of petals around, around, around. And then at the end, she turned it into a square. And so I was thinking that would might make a really cool center square for something. Uh, if, I, I, what I'm thinking is the blanket, um, the one that's called Around the Basis Blanket, uh, if you haven't seen that on Ravelry, but it's, it's, um, it starts where you start with your own square in the middle, and then once you take the square that you want, um, you have to end up with so many stitches per side, and then you start going around with their pattern for the different rounds, and, and so that might be an idea how to use this. I'm not sure, but anyway... Hopefully this shawl, I will use up all of that cake. Okay, so my last work in progress, I know I just keep starting these things, starting other things, but it is something, I just started this morning, and of course I haven't finished them yet, but it is going to be an elf on a shelf. <laughs> I will show you the picture. If I can find the picture. Where is the picture? Oh wait. Um, right here. It is called Jingle Elf, the Christmas Elf, or something like that. But it's based on the Elf on the Shelf pattern right there. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, the person that made this pattern is Jessica Doring. I think I pronounced her name right. Anyway, she uh, is the one that I got this pattern from. Well, but on, on um, on Ravelry. But anyway, the story about this, when I saw this, I thought that I just need to make one as part of my um, Christmas decorations and um, when so here's my story <laughs> um, okay so when I was a child my grandmother now she loved to decorate for Christmas Hol Christ the Christmas holiday was her favorite holiday and she went all out decorating and she had this little wooden house that um, very small little wooden house that that her and my grandfather lived in. They lived right next door, in fact, to us. And um, she always decked out her house in Christmas, Christmas decor for the holidays. Well, she did not have a fireplace in her house. And so she ordered, she was a big mail order, uh, orderer, I guess you'd say. <laughs> it's before online ordering altogether. <laughs> so anyway, catalog shopping. 
and um, she ordered I don't know what catalog but um, she, there was a catalog she used to order from that was called Finger Hut and I believe it's still in business and she used to order from that all the time and so it might have been from there I don't know but anyway she ordered a cardboard fireplace that you would put together and, and since she didn't have a fireplace so she would or she ordered that cardboard fireplace and this little elf on the shelf would be sitting on the mantle of that cardboard fireplace that she had in her house and she had made each of the grandchildren she had three grandchildren grandchildren myself and two, my two brothers and she made each of us Christmas stockings and she would hang those um, on the shelf she made them out of felt. She didn't crochet or knit. I, I believe she, yeah, she did sew, but uh, this was something that she made out of felt and sewed the pieces together, these uh, Christmas stockings. But anyway, I always remember that cardboard fireplace because there was even cardboard flames, you know, in the bottom of the fireplace, and there was a light that was behind these cardboard panels, and the light must have had a fan or something that would turn to make the light kind of flicker. So you think it's the flames of the fire and so I was looking on my phone uh, earlier because I was wanting to see if I could find if I can find it if I could find a picture of that fireplace and so I just looked up vintage cardboard fireplace and I think I found it <laughs> I'll zoom it up here it was it's a catalog ad and it looked like it cost four dollars and seventy nine cents and this was probably, uh, well, I don't remember exactly how old I was when she got it because I always remembered it. So, uh, early 70s, probably. Maybe even the end of the 60s, but maybe the early 70s. Anyway, I found it, so I was going to show it to you. Right there. I think that's it because I remember on the chimney up there at the top there there was a, a picture of Santa on the chimney so I think that was the fire fireplace see that's an old looks like an old catalog ad you can see so anyway that elf on the shelf reminds me of her um, now when I was 12 we had because uh, we lived in a little wooden house also no air conditioning <laughs> um, until I was 12 and then um, um, we had a house built uh, right there on the property and it was a house that had brick and so there was some brick left over and so with that leftover brick my grandparents put a fireplace on their house with that brick and so after that she did have a fireplace that she was able to put her stock the Christmas stockings on but anyway it was just a a nice memory that I remember uh, from my childhood and so um, that's why I think I just have to make an elf on the shelf now I know there's a story that goes along with elf on a shelf about watching over the children and finding the elf uh, in different places uh, I'm sorry he didn't have a head yet <laughs> but um, I didn't know anything about that story all I just I just remember that it was the doll the elf doll that was on the mantle um, we didn't know anything about the background story um, that goes with it so anyway so that's my story for the day <laughs> um, and let's see I told you about the yoga socks being in timeout and I think that's really it uh, thanks for tuning in today to the my my episode and and um, letting me share my projects that, that I've been working on with you and my progress on them and um, thank you so much for my subscribers I think I'm at like 210 now so that's really exciting um, it's so fun to be able to share what I like to do with everybody and um, please in the comments below though let me know what what y'all are working on I do know that there are some of my subscribers that do make YouTube videos and so they do show what the projects that they're working on but I know I have many subscribers that are crafters and um, that don't make videos and I would love to know what you're working on and what colors you're doing it in and maybe share the patterns that you're um, working on at the moment um, I think that would be real fun for everybody to know what everybody's working on. So, in the comments below, please uh, 
you feel free to do that. And let's see, that's it. Um, we have this week of school, homeschooling. We have next week of homeschooling, and then Monday and Tuesday of the next week. And then we'll be out for our Christmas holidays, um, which is wonderful. We'll have three weeks being off from doing school, so we're excited about that. And um, that's it. Oh, I had a nice birthday. My, my birthday was on um, Black Friday. I guess you'd say the day after Thanksgiving, the 24th. And, um, of course, I got this yarn. I had ordered that for myself from from my husband, but I ordered it. <laughs> and then um, uh, my husband did take me out to dinner on Sunday after. And uh, my son and uh, my younger son, of course, was with us. And my older son and my daughter-in-law came and came and ate with us and they um, brought me a gift which was very sweet of them and I'll show you what they got me they got me this um, coloring book that says it's called magic garden fantastic flowers to color and it's got some really um, great uh, pictures and things to color I like to color with uh, colored pencils so uh, I'm I'm uh, will be happy uh, be anxious to get some coloring done also <laughs> and then they also bought me a purse a new purse which I really I think is really pretty I haven't filled it yet I haven't changed over from my other purse but I uh, intend on doing that maybe today or at least you know as soon as possible <laughs> so anyway that's what they got me so uh, I had a really great birthday it was nice I had lots of people wish me happy birthday uh, on YouTube and on Facebook as well um, oh and let's see on Ravelry you can find me at TJS 140 and on Instagram I'm yarn joy underscore podcast yes so uh, mainly you can find me there the most um, I'm trying to be better about putting stuff on Instagram I don't have that much on there um, but really the quickest you could uh, get messages to me I guess would be to leave comments on my videos on uh, here on YouTube so anyway I hope everybody has a great week um, I will sign off for now and I uh, please come back next week to see my progress on these projects and see what other projects I get started everybody have a great week bye